Hey guys, welcome back to Field Notes. We are now in early October, and that means the indigo snake survey season is just around the corner. Um, but right now, I'm wrapping up the last few things on this snake inventory project. I'm out on this big private property with some absolutely stunning habitat. We've got some beautiful longleaf flatwoods behind me. Um, you know, we've finished up the field work, the surveys, uh, submitted our final report and our habitat management recommendations. So all that's left to be done is literally pick up my fences, my artificial cover, my traps, and we're done. Um, it's been three months since I've had a working ATV, but I finally have it. And so hopefully this will all be done the next day or two. You know, despite all the difficulties that came along with the field work here, um, you know, it has been a neat project, and uh, I will really miss the landscape here. The habitat is really well managed. It's beautiful. Um, you know, I just don't get to see many places like this. As you can see, you know, just, you don't see flatwoods like this very many places. So, um, as you can see, I'm in middle of picking up all my traps and drift fences and all the tin and stuff's on the trailer as well. Uh, so this is what I'm doing the next couple days. Um, but I've got a number of clips from this project that I still haven't shown you guys. And so I'm going to just put the rest of those in this video. And then next time I'll be on some new projects and uh, we'll highlight those. But hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you guys next month. All right, so back out here on the sand hill. And I've got, I got another river frog in here. Um, but also, finally got a coach whip in the trap. I kept seeing shed skins around this fence. Um, on a couple other places on the property, but this is the first coach whip we've gotten in a trap. So, turned out to be a good morning. So I took a closer look at that frog once I got it out of the, uh, out of the trap and out of the water dish. And it turns out this is actually a green frog. I've caught about half a dozen river frogs, uh, in this trap. Uh, so I just assumed it was another one of those, but as you can see, it's got dorsal lateral folds. There's lines running down the back behind the eye, uh, and that's indicative of a green frog. So, um, still odd that we're getting frogs like this up on the sand hill, um, but pretty cool. There's another look at that coach whip. Once it got out of the trap. As you can see that uh, the ones in this part of the state... They tend to be you know, pretty unicolor. You don't get the the black heads on them. Um, they're not bicolored, but still really, really pretty. See, he's got a an old scar here on his side, but otherwise, he appears to be in pretty good health. Um, great looking snake. And people are always amazed at how calm coat trips are. You know, once you get them in hand. Um, they cease being the real flighty, fast uh, animals that you think of them. And uh, they usually calm down really, really quickly. And then sometimes they'll even you know, feign death. They kind of go limp. Uh, so they're actually one of the easiest snakes to work with. Um, real easy to photograph, real easy to take measurements on. Um, yeah, they're just really, really cooperative. So... All the data collection goes by super fast, and we're able to put them back out in the wild uh, pretty quickly. Right, so we've got this, um, there's a tortoise burrow right here under this wire grass. It's pretty concealed, but uh, it's a good place to release this snake before the heat of the day is upon us. Uh, so it's time to let him go. All right, so it's a super muggy day. Uh, rained a lot last night, and it's heating up fast. Um, I've already checked a couple of fences, and now I'm out here on this uh, shortleaf pine 
Hickory Upland. It's another one of these galvanized hardware cloth fences uh, with the, the big box trap in the center. Um, been walking along, haven't gotten much except for a couple green frogs. Um, but then I uh, approached this trap and I heard some racket. So we're going to see who's in here. Ah, okay. There we go. It's another black racer. Uh, let's see. Let's see if this is a recapture or a new individual. I think this is the third racer I've gotten in this fence this week. Uh, they've all been new individuals. Uh, so it's pretty cool to just to see uh, the density of these animals here. Um, they definitely... Definitely a lot of biomass on the landscape, and they play a significant role in the food web. All right, I saw some movement in this box. Let's see what we've got. All right. Really nice looking garter snake. Uh, a bit bigger than the other ones I've seen here, so that's exciting. Uh, anyway. They're real pretty here. Ooh. Kind of got a bluish green tint to them. Um, but then they're still kind of checkered. Let's see, he's going to settle down a little bit. Really pretty snakes. Well, this is a first for me got a Carolina Wren in this trap, which doesn't surprise me since you know, Wrens frequently forage on the ground. There we go. There she went. I think we've got a Rodent in here, cotton rat. I think I saw it running around. Oh my gosh. Oh, there we go. Look at that. That is our first diamondback on the property. And it's a young of the year. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's so cool. And there's the cotton rat. We got a lot of these his big cotton rats in this trap. Oh my gosh. This is exciting. Oh, beautiful little snake. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna first open up the little side door over there, get this cotton rat out. There we go. We can just kind of spook him. There he goes, he goes right on out. Oh, he ran back in. There we go. Come on out, buddy. There you go. Off into the bushes. All right. Then got this little guy. He's coiled up. Should be pretty easy to get him out and into a bag. All right. Ready to get him out. Here, buddy. All right. There we go. He's pretty calm. Uh, not very defensive at all. Beautiful little snake. And, uh, yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and bag him. And, uh, you know, I'm going to go secure the bag and then get my uh, data collection kit set up. And I'll take a few measurements and stuff on him uh, before releasing him right here. Um, so, yeah, this will be over before you know it, little dude. This is super exciting. Uh, I've been trying pretty hard to get some of these bigger upland, Zarek upland species. Uh, such as diamondbacks, uh, pine snakes, hognose, you know, things like that. But trying to document them on this property, you know, I knew that, you know, at least some of those species should be here. Um, but it's just been really slow going. And, uh, man, final hour, end of the season, little neonate diamondback. So that gives me a, a lot of hope for early next spring when I, you know, renew my efforts out here and uh, really try to get some more more species uh, documented so 
really, really exciting stuff. All right, so this little guy or girl has been, you know, processed. We've taken some data, gotten all we need from her, and she's now free to go. There you go. All right, guys, you ready for some more fall magic in the final hour? Look what we've got here. You may not be able to see it very well in the screen, but let me get it out for you. How about that? Oh, yes. I've been trying for these guys at this wetland all year and at a couple other wetlands just visually and here we go the day before I close traps I've got a gorgeous eastern mud snake oh this is fantastic what a way to end the season all right so it's time to release this mud snake Turned out to be a gorgeous, healthy male. Uh, just really in peak condition. He even has a bit of a food bolus. He probably ate a uh, small amphiuma uh, recently in the last couple days. Uh, I catch them quite a bit in this pond. Uh, so he seems to be doing really, really well. I've taken all the data I need. It's time for him to go back into his pond.